question? Do you remember how to make the ta form from an e adjective like wabishi, which meant wretched? Hi, it's wabishikata. Hi, wabish, wabishikata. Um, can you read this word for me? Hadashi. Hi, hadashi. Hadashi has a kanji for ashi in it, and this means barefoot. Hadashi, barefoot. Um, do you know what this kanji is? This is michi. Yep, michi, road. Hi. And this word right here, fumu, means to step on. Fumu. Can you read this sentence for me and tell me what you think it means? Hadashi de michi o fumu. So, fumu is to step on, michi is the, the street, to step on the street. Can you remind me what hadashi again? Hadashi means barefoot. Barefoot. Um, so, step barefoot on the road. Exactly, yep. And the de is just a tool. So, on is yeah, to step barefoot on the road. So, right over here. Um, sorry. I'm just going to delete this page. Boop, boop, boop. And we basically just did this. Next one, suberu. Um, suberu is a ru verb, and it means basically to slide. Kind of has a slidey sounding name too, suberu. Why? What do you think the ta form of suberu might be if it's an u verb? Any guesses? Suberu. Hi. It's a little hard how you read it. But there's a small two right here. Couldn't tell if you knew that or not. So subeta is the top form of subeta. Hi. So last time I kind of touched on what compound verbs were. Or, well, compound words. Most compound words in Japanese are made with the stem form of a verb being attached to something else. The something else could be a verb. It can also be a noun. And it doesn't really matter what you're attaching it to as long as the first part is in stem form. Stem form um is basically is must form minus must but for our purposes we're just going to be talking about how to make stem form which um for um specifically u verbs for example nusumu which do you know what nusumu meant nusumu is to to steal something yes to steal so nusumu has this final u sound right here and all you do is you kill this u and you add in this E, and you make nusumi. So what would be the stem form of suberu? The stem form is suberu, and it's a root word verb. Hi. It's an and verb. therefore, it was an U verb. Yes, it's an U verb. Um, it's an U verb, so it has to have an E sound to it. So okay. suberi. Yes, exactly, suberi. Perfect. So our next word is yasui. You may or may have heard this word before. You will normally not see it with kanji. I just saw it and I was like, oh, cool. We got in there. It means cheap. Sorry. It means I'm easy. Uh, yasui can also mean cheap, but it has a different kanji for that. So that's why I was like, oh, cool. cool. Uh, but yes, yasui Thank means you. easy. And normally you're not going to see it with um, kanji. And yasui a lot of times is kind of taught almost like a grammar rule, but it's literally the compound word thing we mentioned on the last page where we got the um, ad adjective easy and you're just kind of combining the stem form of a verb in order to make it easy to do, do the verb. So yasumi yasui means easy to steal. What do you think fumi yasui means? Easy to walk, easy to yeah, step. Yeah, easy to step on, exactly. Perfect. So how would you say easy to slip, a, a path that is easy to slip on? So yasui is an e adjective. So we know this is an adjective. It's an adjective. Hi. So it's um, suberi yasui michi. Yes. 
Yeah, that's exactly what you say. Subiri yasui michi. A path that's easy to slip on. Nice. Um, so yasui is um, um the what do you think the top form of yasui is? Yasukata. Yeah, oh, yasukata. no, I'm sorry. No. Oh, it's, it is okay. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Kata. Yes. Kata. Um. Do you know what this word is? First time we've seen it, but you may not have seen it before. It's a pretty it's... common kanji. Ame. Yep. Ame. Rain. Perfect. And now we have a do verb. Can you read it for me? It's furu. Do you know what furu means? It's related to furu. ame. Ah. To rain, to drop, yes. to fall down. Specifically, it's to fall. Fall. Um, and yes, we use it for rain. So if we want to say rain falls down, what particle do you think it's going to use? It's going to use wa, ga, o, or to. We can use either wa or ga. Yes, that is correct. Ga would be the standard one they use. Ame ga furu. That's what you normally would say. And if you're using wa, it's because you'd be using wa for a very specific reason. And that is to make it like someone's like, oh, it's snowing. You're like, no, it's raining. <laughs> when you'd use wa instead to kind of be like, duh. Like it, it I is, see. it's wa, wa is a little bit more aggressive than having ga in this case. Because this right here is the object. Same with English. It's raining. What's it in? Uh, what is raining? The it is raining. Raining is still in English the object of the sentence, basically. Um, so can I clarify on this grammar yes. point? Whenever we see a wa particle, it means that a topic has been changed from some prior topic to a new topic. Sadly, no. So this is the thing that I mentioned last week, which is basically how wa and ga are really confusing for people learning Japanese because of the difference between subject, the roles when one is marking a subject and when one's marking an object. So if wa marks a subject of a sentence, it's normal. It's not telling us anything. But if ga marks the subject of the sentence, then suddenly we're be we're 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 talking about new information. However, if ga marks the object, that's normal for passive objects. If we use wa, then suddenly we're being, as I said, more dramatic. We're we're trying to make a point. So that that's why both of these can mark topics depending on where they're located in the sentence. So wa marks object topics and ga marks subject topics. So they I look see. the same. So you kind of have to know where it is in the sentence to um, know what thing it's marking. Some things like with verbs can help you know what it's going to be. Like fudu is to fall. You can't really, it's not to make something fall. That'd be a different verb. This is just falling, like raining. Uh, so it has to be ga, ame ga fudu, because we can tell it's a passive sentence. So the main thing that helps us know whether or not this wa or ga that's appearing is being subject wa or um object wa you can kind of tell by the verb so it's not a lot of times people learn verbs they learn the particle that goes with the verb i'm kind of making you do the opposite to guess the particle based off of what the verb means right um, but yeah that, that's why a lot of times teachers just say oh don't worry about it and they just go <laughs> it's because of that back and forth type of thing and it's confusing I see. um what do you think the top form of fudu is it's a ru verb. Uh, u verb. It's an u verb. Hi. So it's futa. Yes, futa. Perfect. With that little small t. Okay, so our next word is say. I have decided to keep no and de here because you're never really going to just see say by itself. It's going to be something no say, or you're going to see say de, or you'll see both of these. And that's because say means fault. So say day is it's the fault of blank. Like for example, um, if I said um what does you know say day, that means it's my fault. So say is used when you want to lay fault on something. Um, Does it always have a negative connotation? I would say yes. 
I can't think of it being used in a positive way. Yeah, it's it's always negative. Hi. It can be a little bit in the neutral territory, like um in our next sentence it's a little bit more neutral than um like really negative but you're never going to see it in a positive way i would say you wouldn't say like oh thanks to you i've been saved i don't know say actually i think you could say that i don't know i, I guess it could be positive it, i guess it's like a, I, I i think it, i think normally though it tends to be slightly negative the reason i ask is because i think i remember somewhere something like uh this car was made by this company so it's if it's a car if, if it's a toyota company made car i remember seeing this say as in made by toyota mm, then it probably, i don't know if that's true or not that that could be true i haven't seen any car commercials so i don't know um as i think about this more i think it doesn't necessarily insinuate bad or good it, it probably just is like neutral is probably what it is but as an English speaker, I feel like fault normally is a bad word. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it, it doesn't have either. Um, so what does Amega Futa mean? Amega Futa, the rain fall, fall in the past yeah. tense. Yeah, so fell. How could you rearrange fell. this so that we have a relative clause here? So instead it says rain that fell versus just rain fell. The I rain that fell that. is ame toyu futa. Hmm. So to the rain that fell toyu is used for defining things. So if you said ame toyu futa, that's really just defining the falling as rain, rain of falling. So I can kind of see where you got that, but that is a weird sentence that I don't think anybody would ever say. What I want is a relative clause. So all you have to do is keep that futa and you stick it right over there. Damn it. Is rain that fell. That's, rain that's all that you fell. Can do. Grab the verb, throw it on the back. So this is when you can see the short form can be in ta form. It doesn't have to be like that. So futu ame is rain that is falling or will be falling versus futa is rain that had fall. So you could also say um, futeru, which is the ing version. Fute you do ame. Hi. So, falling rain. So this is falling rain to fall rain. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm going to skip that. Okay. Actually, I'm going to go back. What is the top form of Yasui again? Yasukata. Perfect. So right over here is a sentence with say in it. Ore no say de jishin made uh, which is because of me, I completely almost completely disappeared what it is so using this how do you think you would say because of the rain that fell the path is easy to slip on so we have a whole lot of words down here got yasui suberu michi noseide ame and furu the first part you want to make is because of the rain that fell and my hint because is relative clauses because of the rain that fell, the path is easy to slip on. Right. So, um, the rain that fell. Um, so, uh, ooh, uta, uta ameg dakara. The rain. Oh, no, I'm so wrong. sorry. Uh, dakara say, is not wrong in this context. Uh, um, that 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 would be fine, <laughs> but uh, no, no, no say is the same thing. No say de. Um, yes, the path is easy to slip on. Yasui no yasui michi yes. Suberu, what is suberu again? To slip. Suberu is to slip. So yes, easy to slip. Easy to. The path is easy to slip. Yasui. Do you know how to make compound verbs, I told you? What you do is that you get a verb, put it in stem form, and then stick something else on the bottom of it, which is normally going to be a noun, an adjective, or another verb. So in this context, yes. we want to attach it to yasui, which is easy. So I... easy slipping. So it will be suberi yasui machi. Hi. Yep. Suberi yasui michi. 
This is perfect. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that. My goal was uh, Michiwa. 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 Tsuburiyasi. But the other sentence was grammatical. It just felt a little bit dramatic to have the end in a relative clause and start with a relative clause. Uh, versus this right here is like the more normal ending of the sentence. But it was I... grammatically correct and was perfect. Okay. So, you got that is dusk and yo ake is dawn i have these two fun words here um so do you remember how the first part of this word meant was read as it was the dusk word um it's you yep you got that nice could you read this sentence for me um Yoake ni ameka futa. Perfect. So this ni is marking the time when something happened. So this means rain fell at dawn. How would you say the rain that fell in the evening? So right here we have a relative clause. And um, e evening is the you got that. In the evening, right. you got the you got the ni futa ame. Perfect. That's exactly right. Nice. Good job. Yep. So this ni does actually have to go here. So you can't stick that over here. Then suddenly it gets confusing. So this is the only way you could say that. You got the ni futa ame. Okay. So this right here, does this kanji look familiar? Yes, it's ishi. Yep, ishi. What does ishi mean, do you know, on its own? It's mean a stone. Yep, stone. A rock. Yep. Ishi datami is stone paved. So we're basically, this is something that happens with like streets, for example. Streets can be, you know, made out of stone, right? So that would be an ichi jatami michi. Um, so that that's what that is. It's it's basically made of stone, kind of ichi jatami. Um, like a Roman paved road. Exactly. So I want you to make the sentence to step on the stove paid path barefoot. So we got hadashi, which was our barefoot word. And fumu, which is to step on. And I think I, you probably remember the rest of the words. Um, I have a little thing over here with the possible particles to pick. Right. Adashi de. Ishi. Adami no. Michi. Ni. Umu. Hi. This is theoretically not wrong, but this is kind of saying to step at the road. But for stepping on, we actually use o to step onto something. But ni would be more like you're aiming to step there. So perhaps, for example, if you know when you're a kid and you're trying to step on the cracks, specifically, you might use ni in that context. But o would be more normal in this um situation I... perfect i've mentioned nadu before but i didn't actually have this as a word for you to learn do you know what nadu meant my sentence was neko ni nadu because that's like my favorite sentence for some strange reason hi to become a cat yep. to become yep so nadu is to become so when things become something well when nadu is attached to something is either going to have the thing is that they it becomes is either going to have a knee for it or it's going to have a coup. The reason for this is that knee is the marker for like nouns and um na adjectives when you're going to be doing something for a verb. So the way you do a verb and the way you're doing it is going to be a noun or an adjective, we're going to have knee there. 
Versus if something ends with an E sound, instead the E is going to turn into a ku. And that's what they do instead. Because ku is kind of also an adverb marker. And adverb just means I am modifying the verb. So, um, so a our... quick question yes. here. If the suppose we have a noun or we have a verb that in the stem form and it had an E sound. Hi. It would turn into ku. It would turn into ku. Yes. Hi. So you, you actually see that a lot with nadu. You tend to not to see verb nadu, um, but you do see a lot negative verb nadu. So weirdly enough, verbs in Japanese that are in negative short form are basically the same as adjectives grammatically in Japanese. So you never see this, but you do see that. It's just a really weird thing. So you wouldn't say taberu ni naru, but you can say tabenaku naru, which would mean to become unable to eat. So. Suppose we have a noun right. that end in an E sound. Mm. Would that be in grammatical? Would we treat it as a noun or? You would treat that as a noun. So for example, I can't think of a noun on top of my head, but... um. Kirei. Kirei is a not adjective. So you see in the dictionary like this, kirei, but it's not going to become kireku because that's not happens. The noun, there's a boundary right here where this is the existence of the word. And then you add other things on top of that. So the na versus a ni. So with e adjectives and stuff, this e is out of the boundary of what makes the word itself. Um, like, um, like, kawaii, Hi. Or tarashi, like that. So this is the boundary. Basically, you're not really allowed to change anything in this word boundary. And everything outside of it is like, change whatever you want. I'm the grammatical special stuff. Hi. And that's basically how that works. And that's kind of how conjugation works in general. So like with um, nusumu, for example, it's not really nusumu. It nusum is kind of what it is. And then whatever you're adding over here is just the conjugation going on. So I see these things right here um, linguistically are called roots. Is what they are. So if you're ever interested in linguistics, you can like see what are roots. And very interested in linguistic. This is a very important point that I need to remember, especially when you say is not nasumu, is nasu mm. Mm hmm. And then whatever the vowel that come with it is different. It just happened that the Japanese doesn't have a phonetic writing system to, exactly. to indicate that. To make something more confusing, the word stem in Japanese um, is actually another word for root. But you can't write the root in Japanese characters. So this that's actually how the stem form was made. So, um, so even though dictionary means add u to the end of it. Well, stem form is actually the, it's add e, but it's actually like the basic form of the verb kind of. So for example, tabe, hey. which is a do verb, it's just tabe, that's the stem form. So that's, that's also like the root of the word. It's um, the same. So if you read a linguistics book for Japanese, they might use the word stem to refer to the root. I know because I was reading a Japanese book not that long ago, and I was like, that's so interesting. Because a lot of books will call it just stem. Like Genki calls the, I think it's like infinitive. It's like the official word. But right. instead they call it stem. So that's like a confusing thing is the no, learning the different vocabulary. The the thing that I've noticed there is when you drop the root, the taibe, isn't that become sort of like a noun? Yes. The, the act of eating. Yes, this um, in general, the root or the stem of a verb tends to act as a noun. Um, it has certain restrictions. Like I can't say tabe ga suki, you know, I like theoretically, if that was a noun of eatingness, you could say that I like eatingness, but you can't really say tabe ga suki. So it is gr like grammatically the same as a verb, the tabe, the stem or the root of a verb. But um, there's certain restrictions when you can use them. 
that I, a normal noun wouldn't have. Hi, hi. I see. So way over here, I have naru to become, and yasui became yasuku naru. What does this part mean? Do you know? Yasuku becoming naru. easy or exactly. become easy. Yes, yes. So now we're looking at to. To is a kind of interesting grammar thing because it basically has two possible meanings. If you're talking about something in the future tense, it means you're talking about something that has a hundred percent certainty and it probably is caused by the thing. So when this happens, this happens and it should be like a hundred percent probability. That's what like to does. So if I said, ame ga furuto, michi ga suburi yasuku naru, means when it rains, the road gets slippery. It gets easier to slip, or, slip on the road. Because that's something that should be a hundred percent fact. You can also use to for things in the past if something happens right after you do something. So even though it's not necessarily a hundred percent in the if it was a future tense, if it happened in the past, it's always going to happen in the past, right? You can't change your past. The past is already set in stone. So to shows up to mean right after that. So I do this and then that happens. So in this Can sentence, I clarify? Yes. This to here, is this the same to as when we say this and this and this? No. Like an itemized, like a listing of... This to right here only goes after clauses or many sentences. So the to that go, that's a list to only goes after nouns. I see. So that'd be blank and blank. So it looked very about, similar. Yes. What about the to that mark a quotation? It's also is not that, that to. This, this is the to. Okay. Sometimes you'll see a sentence that will end in to. I don't know if you've read a lot of Japanese. But for example, you might say like, Ame ga furu to. And like, you probably wouldn't see this specific sentence. But then it'll be like dot, dot, right. dot. This right here basically means if this happens, something bad's going to happen. Like the insinuation is like, oh. oh no. And that's because it's the 100% certainty aspect of toll and you're talking about future yeah. tense. So in a way it's kind of like, oh no, if, if this happens, I'm yeah. going to die. Um, this shows up a lot they, in Japanese. They always, they also kind of translate this this form, this toll with the dot, 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 as in you better do this. Yes. Otherwise something bad is going to happen. So you must do it. Kind mm -hmm. of a... Um, That's the same as nakereba. Um, you might have also heard of nakereba. That is also if. So when it's dot dot dot, it's translated as must. You must do blank. But it literally is if you don't do blank, then it's like the mom like shaking her finger at you. Hi. And you're gonna okay. be in you're gonna be in big trouble. So yeah, if statements in Japanese tend to have that negative connotation when you drop it off to being must. So this is a different toe than all the other toe. Yes. So there's three toes in Japanese. <laughs> yep. But yeah, this is the sentence toe. Sentences or clauses. Hi. Okay. How do you think you would say, I step on the path and I slip? So the idea is that right when you step on the path, you went one foot on and bam, you're, you splat right on the floor. How do you think you would say that? We got furu, so michi, and suberu. So it's michi o um, futa to suberu. Hi. So um, I haven't taught you how to conjugate um, verbs that end with mu. So if you want fu the ta form of that, that'd actually be funda. Oh, I'm sorry, funda. I should have known Keep, this. Keeping that oh. um m ish sound there, that not that nasal. <laughs> What's going on? Keeping that nasal and adding the ta da. Uh, hey. But sadly, mm -hmm. something I didn't tell you, I, I didn't tell you this, is that to only goes after um dictionary form. Or um maybe nai form. I don't, I don't know about night form, but I'm pretty sure it only goes after, um, you can't have it after past tense. 
So fumuto. I see. Anything about the past tense, it actually comes at the end of the sentence. So if this sentence is past tense, suberu is the one that needs to be in past tense. Should be sun, sube, subeta. Subeta. Yeah. So when you do that, suddenly the whole sentence is in past tense, even though only the final verb is. So a lot of um, things in Japanese, this will happen is this like interesting thing where the verbs will not be in past tense but if you translate it into english they all would be in past tense so that's a confusing thing about to no past tense for to okay so before we read this page it is our halfway point so i'm going to stop sharing and we'll do the switcheroo